against, but it doesn't matter how Satan come up against you. Here's the one thing you need to know. Amen. That no matter what Satan throw at you, no matter how tempted you might be, in uh, the scripture, the Bible says in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 10 and, and, and uh, 10 and 13, it says this. There has no temptation taken you as such is common to man. In other words, but God is faithful. So that's when we have to lean and depend on Jesus. Yes. See, the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Mm -hmm. He said, and when he said, but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able. Let me tell you something. The reason sometimes we allow temptation, uh, we we'll give in to temptation, it's not because we're not able to overcome it. It's because we allow it to come. Sometimes we override the Holy Spirit, and when the Holy Spirit is talking to us and telling us and showing us, we override the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit. Because if you understand what God is saying, he said there is no temptation. That can tempt you above that you're able. He said, but will with that temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. See, God's going to teach you. He's going to show you that you can bear anything that the enemy can throw at you. Sometimes we get caught up in what he's doing rather than what God is doing. Too many times we get caught up in what the enemy is saying. Here's the thing. What bothers me is I hear too many people talking to the devil. What are you talking to the devil about? You know, and then some folks think they give God credence when they say that old devil been bothering me and I've been fighting the devil all week long and the devil been behind me and the devil been trying to stop me, the devil, devil, devil. And then they say, but then Jesus saw me through. Quit giving the devil credit. Quit giving the devil ammunition. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Give God the credit. Yes. That no matter how he's tempting you, he say, I, you put not put more on you than you can bear. And with that same temptation, yes. see, same thing he's trying to get at you with. Amen. He'll help you to bear. Mm -hmm. Amen. We need to understand that he did the same thing to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Satan don't care who we come after. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. He said 40 days Jesus himself was, was, uh, was tempted and the devil came tempting him. And then he said in those days he did eat nothing. That means that Jesus Christ was Satan felt he was at his weakest point in it. You see, when you've eaten nothing, and when they were ended, what he did was he after with hundreds. So Satan came after. Let me tell you something. Sometimes we are our own worst enemy. Sometimes we, when we get when we get down and out, and we get starving, and we get hungry, and we get weak, we speak things into existence that we don't need to speak into existence. And so Satan will hear you. And so even at Jesus' weakest moment, Satan was right there. But here's what the scriptures tell us. Uh, uh, the, the Bible tells us this. Don't get caught up in what Satan is telling you. Don't get caught up just because you're weak. Or just because you're at a vulnerable point in your life. The scripture in uh, Ephesians 3 and Ephesians 6 and 10 says this. Say, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Yes. See, sometimes we got to remove ourselves from the equation and put it in God's hand, don't we? Oh, yeah. Amen. Too often we try to go it alone or try to do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. Or we try to do it and then put God in it. What we have to understand is to be strong. Mm -hmm. He is in yourself, your abilities, your education. He said, be strong in the Lord. Yeah. And the power of his might. And then it says, just put on the whole arm of God that you may be able, whatever the enemy throwing at you, that you may be able to stand against the wilds. And that word wilds means the tricks of the devil. Amen. See, the devil going to throw some tricks at you now. Mm -hmm. Think about it in your life. Think about sometimes you run into situations and Satan is right there bringing something to you and telling you. Let me tell you something. Satan will bring tricks in the church. Yeah, mm -hmm. Satan will trick you in the church. Start talking about Satan to come in and somebody don't like you. Somebody said this. See, Satan don't care how he attack you. Here's the whole objective of Satan is to turn you around. He don't care what it takes, but you got to be strong in the Lord. See, sometimes you might be in your, in, in your last dollar. Satan will wait till your last dollar. And then what he'll do is, he'll say, see, the Lord can't provide for you. Mm -hmm. 
you know, or you get into a bad situation. See, you might be a little sick. And see, you might be sick for a while. Let me tell you something. When Jesus said, when the Bible said that by my stripes you're already healed, sometimes we don't understand that concept. He said you're already healed. You might still have some symptoms of sickness. You might still be going through some pain. You might be still dealing with something. He said, but by my stripes you're already healed. And here's the problem. I heard somebody tell me one time, say, say that if you don't get healed from sickness and then you die, say evidently you didn't have enough faith. But I'm here to tell you this morning, even when you die, you, 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 receive, you receive healing from Jesus Amen. Christ. And there's a better healing Amen. on the Amen. other side. Amen. Amen. So when he said, by my stripes, you're already healed. Death in Christ is not a sickness, it's a healing. Amen. <laughs> Some folks get it, you know, they think that, well, they die. Let me tell you something, you think about it, as you get older, as you get older, you don't want to stay here forever. Amen. You start having pain, pains and aches and mm -hmm. stuff that not moving as fast as it used to. <laughs> <laughs> There's some situations in life yeah. that start happening. But Satan will come at you, but he's no fall for the tricks of the devil. Yeah. And listen to what the devil did to Jesus. Listen to what he said to him. In verse 3, he said, And the devil said unto him, If you be the son of God, command the stone that it be made bread. Listen to what he said. If. He didn't say he was the son of God. He told him, say, if you be the son of God. Now isn't that something? Satan was the archangel, wasn't he? You don't think Satan knew who knew Jesus is? Satan knew Jesus better than you and I know him. But he wanted to tell, see that what? He come to you with the same thing. If you be a Christian, see, if you have faith, see what he's doing, that word if is a, a, a certain amount of doubt he's putting into your heart and mind. If you could, if God loved you, he would have done this for you. If God cared about you, he'd have blessed you. If God would have done would, would, have, would have answered your if God loved you, he would have answered your prayer. See, he wants you to have a certain amount of doubt. You think about this same trying to give Jesus Christ doubt, and Jesus know he know it. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? But I'm going to show you how Satan is. Show you just how Satan works. Satan don't care about whether you know the truth or not. He doesn't care whether, he want to know do you believe the truth or not. Not if you know the truth, but do you believe the truth. Listen to what Satan, he said, he told, just told Jesus, if he be him, in Mark uh, chapter 1 and verse 23, listen to what Satan said. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, the unclean spirit cried out. Listen to what the unclean spirit said, what you say, saying, let us alone. What have we to do with you, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? And here's the key. He looked at what he said. I know you and who you are. <laughs> and then not only do you know him, he said, he said, you are the Holy One of God. <laughs> A minute ago, he said, if <laughs> you be the Son of Christ. If you be the Son of God. Now he said, I know you. I know who you are. Let me tell you something. Do, do, do Satan know who you are in Christ? Do he really know who you are? Do you know, do Satan know that you're a child of God? Do Satan know that you're a steadfast believer in Jesus Christ? Do, do Satan know that you're committed to the work of Christ? He said, yeah. And this is what he said. And Jesus answered him, said, it is written that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. What he's saying, we, we're not supposed to live just by natural food. <coughs> He said, but man should not live by word alone, but by every word. See, here sometimes, you know, how many times we've seen people, they want to pick and choose what commandments and what words of God they want to follow. They want to pick and choose in the Bible what fits them. The Bible said, out of every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, everything that God said, we ought to adhere to it, we ought to believe it, we ought to stand on it, no matter what it is, whether it be for us or against us, we are supposed to stand on the word of God. Jesus says, written, that every word of a command, let me 
me tell you something. Here's the reason we need to stand on the word of God. The Bible says heaven and earth will pass away. He said, but my word is going to always stand. If you can't stand on nothing else in this world, you can stand on the word of God. See, this world is going to be destroyed one day. This world, heaven and earth, going to, the way it is today, is going to be destroyed one day. Can you stand on the word of God? And if you're talking about standing on the word of God, not just when it's convenient, will you stand on it when you don't know when, when it's inconvenient? Will you stand on it against all odds? Will you stand on it against mother, father, sister, brother? Will you stand on it against co-workers and anybody that would you just stand on the word of God regardless of what's coming your way? Will you stand when things are not going well in your life when you stand on the word of God? Amen. See, it's easy to stand when everything's going well. You know, it's easy to stand when everything's okay. It's easy to stand when we're on that mountaintop and because then we can be glorified and we stand on the word of God as long as everything is going well in our life. But can, we, can you stand on when things are not going so well? All right, all right, yes. yes. Can you stand on it when those, those bills need to be paid and, and your finances are a little low? Can you stand on it then? Can you stand on it when your child is, your wayward child is out there doing things and you've been praying and praying and praying and they're still out there? Can you still stand on it and believe that Jesus Christ is going to bring them in? Yeah. See, can you stand on God's word that when you, I don't have a job and things don't look, things look bleak and the possibilities don't seem there, can you stand on it then? You want to know where you stand on my words. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says the devil taking him up in a high mountain and showed him all the kingdom of the world in a moment of time. One moment of time. He took him all the way up in the world and wanted to show him in one moment of time. You know, here's the problem what we have a problem with. People don't understand that Satan is the God of this world. Mm -hmm. See, I know we, everybody says, well, Pastor, he's the prince of this world. 